welcome to the One Chart at a Time video series. I'm your host, John Schwabish, and we are getting right into learning more about bar charts because on today's video, we have Ben Jones from Data Literacy talking about the paired bar chart. And as you're going to see, he's going to talk about a lot of aspects about the paired bar chart that you should be aware of when you're plotting your data. So I'm going to hand it over to Ben so you can learn more about this chart type. Hey John, thanks for inviting me to share some thoughts about a chart type you're covering in your One Chart at a Time series. And hello everyone, my name is Ben Jones. I'm co-founder of Data Literacy over at dataliteracy.com. Today I'll be talking to you about the paired bar chart. We have pairs of eyes, pairs of socks and shoes, so why shouldn't bar charts be able to grow a pair too? We'll consider scenarios where bars are probably better off on their own instead of being paired up, and maybe we'll also find a time or two where those lonely bars can be brought together in blissful matrimony. So first, what is a paired bar chart? A paired bar chart is a chart that uses bars, no surprise there, but the bars come in twos. If we start with a simple bar chart of 2018 population by region from the World Bank, we get this basic bar chart. But what if we want to compare populations based on, say, where they live in an urban or a rural setting? We could create a stacked bar chart like this one with population bars divided into two segments each, a yellow segment for the rural population and a blue segment for the urban population. But quick, which region has the second highest urban population? Instead of stacking them as segments of a single bar, we can separate them in pairs like this, allowing us to quickly see exactly which region had the second highest urban population, Europe and Central Asia. It has the second largest bar. And this is a paired bar chart. It's really just a special case of the grouped bar chart shown here, in which one of the two categorical variables used to group the bars has only two levels. In this example, the bars are grouped first by income group, which has four levels, and then by region, which has seven levels. With our original paired bar chart, though, there are only two levels of the population type variable, urban and rural. So we get this monogamous relationship between those category levels. We see paired bar charts quite often in scientific research papers like this mock-up I created. Sometimes they even come with error bars, as shown here. So what are the strengths of the paired bar chart? Well, as Tamara Munzner and Eamon McGuire elegantly and generously shared in the book, Visualization, Analysis, and Design, the paired bar charts make use of the most effective encoding type, position on a common scale. We can very accurately judge the proportions by comparing the position of the ends of the bars, since they're all aligned or justified to the exact same baseline. So far, so good, right? But this is actually where the trouble starts for our courageous couples. As Cleveland and McGill pointed out in their 1984 paper, it can be difficult to use paired bars to discern the relationship between two different variables. They show a scatter plot on the left and a paired bar chart on the right, and they said that the same X and Y values are shown by paired bars. As with the Cartesian graph, the scatter plot on the left, one can perceive the x and y values by perceiving their positions along a common scale. But with the ability to perceive slopes removed, the pattern of the nonlinear relationship is difficult to perceive with the paired bar chart on the right. Now, a favorite data visualization author of mine, Naomi Robbins, pointed out in her fabulous book, Creating More Effective Graphs, that the bars in grouped bar charts do have a common baseline. However, she said, a grouped bar chart becomes difficult to read with even a few groups. She goes on to say, I'm often shown grouped bar charts and asked for alternate ways to show the data since the designer sensed that it did a poor job of communicating information. She also says trends in grouped bar charts are difficult to perceive since too much extraneous information is nestled between the relevant readings. And it doesn't stop there. Our couples are becoming more and more unpopular. One last dig from yet another data visualization author. This time you, John, that time you cold-heartedly called for nothing less than killing the paired bar chart. Okay, let's talk about alternatives. Instead of pairing the bars side by side, we can reverse one of the levels axis and create a pyramid chart, sometimes called a tornado chart, like this one. 
This is basically just a stacked bar, but with lengths that diverge from a common center line. Or instead of first grouping by region and then by population type, creating the pairing effect, we can actually reverse this order and first group by population type and then by region. And this makes it easier to compare regions within each population type level. Okay, another key point. Often there's a temptation to use a paired bar chart when one of the grouping categories is time, such as this one that shows how urban population and rural population changed on a year-by-year -year basis from 2000 to 2018. In cases like this, with time involved, it's almost always advisable to use lines instead of bars. We know from Barbara Tversky's research that people tend to perceive lines as trends of a continuous function, whereas they tend to perceive bars as discrete entities to compare. So most often a line chart it is for time-based data. We can consider one more alternative. Instead of placing bars side by side, also called juxtaposing them, we can use superimposed marks on a dot plot like this. We still get to use position with a common baseline and our eyes can more easily focus on one color or the other. There's less ink getting in between the different marks we might want to compare. All that being said, the traditional scientific research use case probably isn't too bad. We can use our population data, for example, to compare urban versus rural populations for China and India like this. And we can make the case that this is part to whole data, so it should be shown in a way that expresses this with stack bars or even pies. But the small number of marks isn't visually overwhelming. And this version with paired bars allows us to compare all four values against the exact same baseline. So it seems like there might just be cases when pairing bars off isn't such a bad idea after all. Like couples on a vacation together, is it any wonder that this seems to work best when the relative number of pairs is small? Uh, thanks again for inviting me to participate, John, and I'll turn it over back to you. And thanks to Ben for that great explanation of the paired bar chart, when to use it, when to avoid it, when to be careful with it. As you're going to see over the next several weeks, there's going to be lots of charts that we need to be aware of. Their ins, their outs, their pros, their cons. But at the end, hopefully by the end of this series, you'll be better at visualizing your own data. So until tomorrow, this has been the One Chart at a Time video series. Thanks for tuning in.